Hello friends and welcome back. So I wanted to share an update with you all that I have successfully cleared the series exam. And in this video we will talk about exam pattern, total domains and how to prepare for series. So let's start. There are four domains. One is governance, domain two is IT risk assessment, domain three is risk response and reporting, domain four is information technology and security. I started with the domain one, but as usual, like any other certification, domain one is always boring. Domain one in Cerisk talks about organizational and risk governance. And uh, chapters which are covered in organizational governance include organizational strategy, goals and objectives, organizational structure, roles and responsibilities, organizational culture, policies and standards business processes, organizational assets. And risk governance talks about enterprise risk management and risk management framework, three lines of defense. I have made a separate video on three lines of defense. You can go and check that as well. Risk profile of the organization, which keeps on changing as per changing environment. What is the risk appetite and risk tolerance and risk capacity? difference between all these of three. I have also made a video on this as well. So if you want, you can check. Legal, regulatory and contractual requirements and professional ethics in risk management. So when I was in middle of domain one, I felt like it was very boring. So I started with domain four parallelly and was switching between both the domains. What I found was that these domains, domain 1 and 4 are independent of each other, meaning that it does not need to be in sequence, but domain 3 and domain 2 needs to be studied one after the other. It is what I found with my 7 years of experience. It may be different, like other individual may feel you need to study in continuous domain. So it is your choice, but I'm sharing you my experience. So what is included in domain two? Domain two talks about IT risk assessment and include different chapters for IT risk identification and IT risk analysis and evaluation. IT risk identification includes risk events, what are the contributing conditions, loss results, threat modeling and threat landscape, vulnerability and control deficiency analysis, that is root cause analysis and developing different scenarios based on different organizational needs and assets of the organization. IT risk analysis and evaluation talks about uh, risk management concepts, standards, different frameworks, what is risk register, how to prepare risk register and what are the things which are included in risk register. Risk analysis methodologies, different techniques used by different organizations, what is business impact analysis, how to prepare business impact analysis, and inherent and residual risk. So inherent risk is when you do not have any controls in place. Residual risk is the risk remaining after putting in the controls. I have made a detailed video on complete risk management as well. That is a 30 minute video. You can go and refer that for better understanding about risk management. Domain 3 is about risk response and reporting. It includes different chapters on risk response, control design and implementation, and risk monitoring and reporting. Risk response means once the risk has been identified, what are the risk treatment and risk response options, who is the risk owner and the control owner. Usually risk owner and control owners are same, but in some situations it might be different. Third party risk management, what are the exception management issues or findings and exception management, management of emerging risks. Control design and implementation talks about uh, control types, what are the standards and frameworks, control design, selection and analysis of control before putting it in place, control implementation and testing and effectiveness of control. Risk monitoring and reporting include risk treatment plans, data collection, aggregation, analysis, and validation, risk and control monitoring techniques, risk and control reporting techniques like how the risk will be reported to the management, be it heat maps or scorecards or any sort of dashboards. 
and defining key performance indicators, key risk indicators, and key control indicators. These are some of the indicators which are used in risk management. Domain 4 is about information technology and security, information technology principles, and what are different information security principles. So, information technology principles talks about enterprise architecture, IT operations management, which includes chain management, IT assets, problems, incident management, etc. Project management and risk management in project, disaster recovery management, what is data life cycle management, system development life cycle, and the emerging techniques like IoT and uh, artificial intelligence, quantum computing, right? And domain 4 also talks about information security principles, security concepts, frameworks, standards, importance of information security training, business continuity management, data privacy and data protection principles. Like, so this is the brief which I have told you about different domains and what are the chapters which are covered and what you are expected to know. Then at the end of the book, we have sample question paper with answer key and glossary. Make sure you go through all the glossary at least once. So domain one is boring. So you can switch between domain four and glossary when you find it like not putting more energy into domain one at some point of time. So this was the content which you need to prepare for say risk and how I prepared and how much time I took to complete it. If you talk about me, I started with the only serious review manual. I did a normal single reading, making some notes in the book itself and highlighting important points. Then I read the book again to revise the notes and underline points which I made earlier. I did not study anything other than the review manual, but yes, if there was anything which I did not know, I used chat GPT or bar to understand the concept. Once I was done with studies, for next one week I only practice sample question papers. Do not expect that same questions will be repeated or they will also come in exam, but these questions can help you prepare your mind for type of questions that are being asked. And once you will start answering, you will get more details as to what Isaka expects in responses, right? The biggest reason why people are not able to qualify is that either they do not read the questions properly or they do not read the answers, like the options properly. I realize that questions are always tricky. It will not be a direct answer which you can memorize and like tick mark and submit. It is more of a subjective situation. There will be multiple right options, but you will be asked to choose the best one. 90% of questions will have adjectives like what is the most important thing to do or what is the best approach, what is the most ben beneficial thing or greatest risk like this. So, okay, let's take an example. Suppose question is which of the following represents the greatest risk when updating the risk register? Updates are carried out jointly with the other functions, carried out following incidents, carried out annually, or subject to approval by the Chief Information Security Officer. So if we look at all the option, option A carried out jointly with other functions, this is fine as sometimes risks are being managed by multiple functions and hence it is not a risk if it is done jointly. If a risk register is updated after an incident, then it is a risk, right? So if you see the second option, you will click on the option and submit it, right? But you will not see the other option. So this is what I'm telling you. You need to eliminate all the other options to get the right one. So if you look at the third option, updates are done annually. So this is also a risk because if updates will be done annually, you have to wait for 12 months to get the updated risk list, right? and it does not reflect the current status of IT risk in an enterprise. So this is also a risk, right? And updating risk register with approval from CISO is not a risk. It is more of a problematic situation. So if you look at all the four options, the greatest risk is if the updates are carried out annually because it will not reflect the actual status of the risk, right? 
so in this questions there were multiple options which were correct but you need to select the best option so you have to read the question multiple times and once you understand the questions then only proceed with the options and if you find the correct option do not just mark and submit make sure you eliminate all the other three options sometimes in doing this activity you will discover that actual answer is the one which you have not even read right the time given for this question paper is for 4 hours and uh, i completed it in less than some sometime less than 2 hours so time is not an issue you can take your time and then answer the questions after reading it properly and for the preparation i took around 45 days to complete this exam with like 4 to 5 hours of daily studying if you are anyhow involved in risk management activities be it risk assessment risk mitigation or if you are the risk owner or control owner then i would advise you to take this course it is mostly focused on risk management within an organization and if you are planning to take this course make sure you subscribe i will start making more videos on my journey and how to prepare what is the content from where to study how to study detailed videos for clearing your crsk exam so make sure you subscribe thank you for patiently listening have a great day bye bye